Well, with this, it is time for me to now move on to the panel discussion. A reminder, please continue to post in your questions to the esteemed speakers, and we will try and get them to respond to you. Also, you can participate in the Twitter buzz with our hashtag, hashtag PitchCMO. Our next panel is a rather very interesting one, the topic being building salience for EMI service for online purchase. Taking us through this, our session chair is going to be Mr. Nathan Mathur, co-founder of 91 Mobiles, and the panelists sharing their insights. First up is going to be Ashwarya Murali, the head of uh, marketing Zest Money. We've got Elizabeth Venkataraman, the joint president, marketing and alliances, Kotep Mahindra Bank. We've got Vivek Kumar Sinha, chief marketing officer, Home Credit India. And we've got Arvind Tambar, the vice president, growth and marketing union cards. Well, with this, I'd like to humbly welcome and invite all our panelists. Thank you so much for your valuable time. And with this, I'd like to pass on the live page to Nitin. Nitin, uh, you know, it's going to be a great panel discussion. We are seeing our panelists now join us one by one by switching on the camera. So Nitin, you've got this mammoth task ahead of you to take for this valuable uh, discussion in the next few uh, minutes till uh, 6.30 and uh, have a great uh, panel discussion. I'm passing on the live page to you now. Right. Thanks, uh, thanks, Bhavna, and uh, hello to all my fellow panelists. Um, I think it's a very interesting topic that we are talking about today because at 91 Mobiles, you had a ringside view to the emergence of EMI offerings and BNPL as a very standard way of buying online. So, you know, we get about 30 million people every month who use our site to research which gadget to buy uh, before they go to a store to buy it. And our user surveys show that the percentage of people using some form of EMI service uh, to buy a mobile or a gadget has increased from under 10% a few years back to a little over 40% in a recent survey that we did about a month back. So this may be specific to our user demographic, but also I'm sure a directional trend in the, in the market at large. So let me kick off the discussion with uh, Vivek uh, from Home Credit. Uh, so Vivek, Home Credit's been around for a while. So could you, you know, kick off by giving us some sense of how you've seen the market as well as the consumer mindset around, uh, you know, PNPL and EMI services evolve over the last uh, few years? Uh, and what, what's been your, your experience like? On this? Uh, thanks, Nitin. Thanks. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, you rightly said, right, Home Credit is in India for quite some time now, right? We have completed more than 10 years in the market. And we are primarily the consumer durables company, uh, you know, financing companies, as you can say, because this is the our way of uh, you know getting new customers on board before we actually give them the other services as well. At the same time, over the period of time, why when we evolved and we started giving personal loan as well as the new to new customers, but when we started, like you said, that when we started, we started with this consumer durables product, right, where we started financing custom, uh, to the customers to buy the new mobile phones, right? And if I look at that time, I think you would probably say that uh, the market was still dominated by one of the biggest player that still is the market leader, but it was dominated by that player. And it was still being served to a certain segment of the customers because taking a loan was a privilege to a certain sect of the customers, right? And this is where the, I will say in the last decade, right? This is where the, uh, the lending is getting democratized, you know, where it's not getting limited to one particular sect of the customers where everybody is more than willing to come forward and take the product, right? And the biggest change, right, if you actually look at that has happened in this segment is the not really being negative or being loan averse, okay? And what I, what I mean by that, not having a taboo about that I'm buying a product on EMI to manage my requirements or fulfill my needs, but rather than accepting this, this is a one way of paying for the product that I want to acquire, right? So this is the biggest mindset change. And this mindset change, while well, it started with millennial, you can say it started with the younger generation where they wanted to experiment, they wanted to enjoy, they did not want to wait for something to happen to avail something in their life. But now this is cutting through the ages. It's no, when we started with the millennium, it's, it's cutting through the ages. And this is where the second point that you said is actually we are seeing in BNPL now, right? If you look at BNPL, now, unfortunately in India, BNPL is still very a gray area, to be honest, because BNPL still works in two different ways. One is the consumer durables when you actually had genuinely take the BNPL. 
Second way is that I give a small loan, but I consider that as a BNPL. So it's a kind of gray area. But even the BNPL sector sector that you look at, right, it actually started getting uh, accepted more about uh, by the young generation. But even the BNPL piece from, you know, uh, discretionary spends that what it used to be limited to, people are accepting that as a norm and going to the necessary items as well. Today, I'm willing to take a BNPL service even for my healthcare. I'm ready to take a BNPL service even for my travel, which is not my, you know, discretionary spend, which is my necessary way of living my life. So the acceptance of EMI to fulfill my dreams, right, is no more a taboo, is a reality, and people are willing to, you know, you know, willing to experiment with that, and people are willing to talk about it, not rather than, you know, hide it under the carpet. So that's how I would say this is how the market is evolving, and you know, all of us are actually seeing this, witnessing this. And like you say, home credit as well, right? We started there. We also evolved. We started with consumer deliverables offline, right? We said, okay, this is a hybrid market, omni market. You can't have just offline. We created online consumer deliverables. And still, you know, while offline, uh, you may say offline and online, but the reality of life is off online will never replace the offline market forever, right? Because we have a large set of underbanked Indian customers who are still. You know, even if they want to, they will go to the shop and they will take the product, right? We have a large set of Indian consumers, right? The ne next billion segment that we talk about, the next billion segment is a segment which will still go to the offline market. So that market will continue to exist. So it's a complete, you know, omni-channel market that is there. And we are pretty much, we also evolved from just offline to omni-channel from similarly for the, you know, uh, EMI services. We I will not limit just to the consumer deliverables, or I will even say, even to the cash loan, the personal loan market, right? While earlier model used to be the, just the telesales or somebody visiting the customer place and selling or somebody at the mall selling some personal loan kind of thing or the branches. From telesales, now the channel is shifting. People are actually taking digitally. Even our home credit, the kind of you know offering that we have started, right? People, see, if you look at two years back or not two years back, 10 years back, you must, anybody was willing to accept three days to get a personal loan disbursed to the bank account. Because I was okay with the idea, I will apply for a loan, my application will go to the bank, credit processing will happen, somebody come, will come visit to my my place, will do the field verification, then the report will go, then somebody will say loan is approved, then I will do some check signing and all. <coughs> After that, loan will disperse, I'm really too willing to wait to three to five days to get the loan dispersed. Today, the delight factor is 20 minutes, right? Yeah. And wow factor is three minutes. That okay, in three minutes, the loan is in my bank account after all the loan application journey. That's how we have also evolved. Today, we do more than 50% of my personal loan digitally, where the entire journey is end to end without any manual intervention or human intervention. And that's how the life is. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think thanks for that. I think uh, it's a couple of very interesting points, including how uh, an EMI service is not as much of a taboo as loans would have been uh, back in the day. And you know, that's, I'm sure, driving a lot of traction. Uh, I'll move to Ashwarya uh, next. Uh, Ashwarya, I know that you know Zest Money has been an early mover in this space in India as well, and I think at 91 Mobiles we've had the pleasure of working with Zest Money over the last few years to you know promote your offering to the gadget buyers on, on our site. And Zest strategy and positioning, uh, you know, especially when it comes to online and you know uh, marketing etc., has seemed fairly nuanced at least on digital. So you know, could you please outline how, you know, you uh, sort of, you you look at your marketing strategy and if it has, how it has, might have changed over the last few years, uh, you know, with the, with the market. So, um, thanks, uh, thanks Nathan for that. And, uh, um, and I think it's great how, you know, we heard about home credit also talking about how EMIs and loans have sort of grown over the last, <laughs> and the process of, let's put it, put it, untabooizing this entire piece, right? Um, with uh, with respect to zest i think uh, the the um, while it is a bnpl player the the largest the deepest uh, bnpl player that that exists today uh, what we sort of thought about when we were looking at the brand and looking at how to talk to the consumer is that there are two three simple insights right um, the first is that money is a means to a better life so money is never an end in itself that was the big thing. So money is always a means to a better life. It's always the means to getting some, getting to a place where you went before. Uh, so money itself and you know the features and the way to access it is brilliant. But the reason why people do it is because they want a better life for themselves. They want a better life for people who are close to them, whether it's their parents, whether it's their kids, um, you know, all of that. 
Uh, so that was the primary insight that we worked on when we were looking at uh, um, you know, Zest Money. Um, and for us, I think when we looked, and I think our inspiration itself came from our millions of consumers who have taken BNPL with us, right? Their stories are just so heartwarming. Um, one of them said, you know what, because of Zest, I could afford to get my mom a better phone. Uh, and then that uh, that allowed me to get my uncle a better laptop, you know, and he just went on and on. And they've taken like six transactions with us just to get better lives. And this was the common thread that we saw. So that was the genesis of us building out the brand to tell everyone that a better life is for everyone. There are 400 million people out there, um, you know, and they are untouched today by any, like the, the problem of credit in India is that unfortunately the top millions have access to a plethora of options. And then underneath that are a whole section of people who don't even have one of those options, um, right? And that's the dichotomy, uh, that's, a that's like quite a drastic dichotomy that exists in this country. Uh, so um, the idea was to say that, you know what, and a better life is for everyone. It's just not for that cream, uh, you know, kind of consumers. Uh, and that's where Zest Money uh, sort of came in. So that was our larger promise. But of course, the reasons we could sort of deliver the promise was really the reason why we chose it, which is the fact that, A, um, it like, like um, you know, uh, earlier erstwhile red tape, there is no red tape here. It's, it is a simple onboarding process. You can, it's online. Consumers, the young consumers today is used to the convenience of downloading an app, getting his uh, or her uh, sort of uh, service in, in sort of 20 minutes, like, uh, you know, like was mentioned earlier, right? So that was one. The second is, I think uh, with Zest, the other advantage is the affordability comes alive and the Aspire life comes alive because the depth of merchants as well. Uh, so starting from an Apple, and like you said, Nitin, 91 mobiles, we've done fantastic activations with the 91 mobiles, right? Um, so starting from Apple to 91 mobiles to, you know, the everyday use cases that we may want, we sort of cover the plethora of it. So it's not like we are use casing only to a particular sector or a particular kind of use case. It, it sort of spreads across. So that was the second reason why we sort of said we could talk about the promise we did. And the third is, of course, you know, like... Uh, on, uh, of course, Fina India is one of the most stable regulatory markets that exist, right? With respect to how RBI, Crystal, you know, the entire machinery, it's not flaky by any means, right? It's the most rock solid machinery that exists. So within that machinery itself, the way we are able to pull different kinds of you know, credit, uh, uh, credit scores off consumers and develop that algorithm to get the right credit and sort of be, um, you know, more often than not, more sure about sort of giving uh, loans and uh, EMIs and credit limits to people. I think the combination of the three, so the merchant depth, the fact that, you know, um, uh, you know, we want, uh, we have uh, the, the RBI regulatory and the algorithm to get that uh, credit limit going. Plus, of course, you know, the fact that we have a depth of, depth of, um, of so depth of merchants and use cases to offer. I think those were the three that sort of uh, made us sort of be, okay, let me put it this way. The, the entire work done by the team is what helps marketing say what we can say, right? Which is aspiring a better life is for everyone. And that's really the genesis of the way we've built our campaign to say that, you know, live better today and you can aspire to something better. So uh, that's really how we've built out uh, marketing uh, for Zest, uh, Nitin. Uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, uh, Shwarya, for that. Uh, come to Arvind uh, next. Arvind, uh, you know, Unicards is a relatively newer player in this segment. So it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts on, you know, how you, uh, you know, position and compete with the more entrenched players. And, um, you know, to what extent do you think that an offering like yours can displace those of some of the traditional banks as well, or, you know, even to drive penetration to previously unbanked people when it comes to services like these? Thanks. Yeah. You know, uh, Uni is uh, relatively new, right? We're just about eight months old. Our product is eight months old. Um, and uh, of, co of course, we want to change the way people interact with credit, um, you know, with a range of products for every consumer segment, right? But of course, you know, every startup has to make a choice and start somewhere, right? And so we, we started with a BNPL product for existing credit card users, right? Um, which is which in itself is large, right? And you ask me why. Uh, we realize that every individual, irrespective of how much they earn, they have two or three occasions in a year where they face a short-term liquidity crunch, right? And the existing mechanisms, uh, you know, to to solve those problems as a, a credit card with very high uh, interest and very rigid rules. Uh, of course, there are hidden charges, right? 
um, personal loans, which you know not easily available for short-term consumer loans, uh, right? um, or other means, friends and family, local loan sharks, etc., uh, really doesn't make sense. Right? So we, we realized that a product that actually smoothens out these liquidity crunches that people feel um, on occasions, right, uh, would be something that can actually appeal to an existing credit card user segment. And that's that's just the genesis of our uh, of our product portfolio, right? And of course, we're going to launch products for more uh, consumer segments. Today, we have a pay one third card, which basically splits all your transactions into three parts to be paid over three months at no interest, right? What that does is that it it helps you smoothen out your spends over uh, over the uh, months, uh, makes it easy for you to you know make you makes you smarter in terms of cash flow. Added to that, added to an innovative product to that, solving the problem of convenience of banking. Right today, if you if you consider um, you know interacting with any of the credit card apps or credit card customer care, it's very cumbersome. Right, um, starting with a very simplified, intuitive digital interface. Um, in fact, you know you know right from um, onboarding, which happens in minutes for us, uh, even the credit check, etc., happens in minutes for us. Uh, a delightful onboarding kit that we provide to the consumers. From there on, a 24/7 WhatsApp support and you know a promise of no hidden charges backed by money back guarantee, right? Actually, has created a product that appeals existing credit cards, credit card users, right? Even the top 10 million, right, among them uh, would go for Uni. And today, we've seen Uni being used for high-value transactions for gadgets and jewelry, but we've also seen very quickly within month to month three. Uh, adoption on high frequency spends like food delivery also happens for our consumers right um, we've and, and and we've also realized because of the of the targeting of existing credit card users our default rates are one of the best in the in the industry today right and from here on our strategy would be to launch different products uh, which are new to the category and back that with our experience and service uh, so that we are actually able to create a tangible new set of products for existing credit card users, right? And that's today. Today, that's our focus. Uh, of course, a larger vision would be to launch more products for uh, consumers who are currently not in the ambit of credit cards. Right. <clears throat> Thanks. <clears throat> so coming to uh, Elizabeth, uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, I think you you hold a very interesting uh, sort of uh, uh, you know uh, mandate here because. On the one hand, you have the regular traditional credit cards, et cetera, at Kotak. And on the other hand, I think you also have an EMI card, which sort of competes in a sense with those traditional cards. So how do you look at this, this offering and you know what, what is your outlook on, on the market as well as your marketing strategy when it comes to building out this category for, for Kotak? So I think the products uh, which have credit are, uh, you know, now earlier traditionally it was available on credit cards, right? The EMI convert your uh, purchase into EMI. And it's an option after you make the purchase for you to convert. And now, uh, you know, credit card penetration is is uh, low because of all the, uh, you know, credit uh, uh, requirements that are there in the system. So uh, debit card EMI was introduced, which is uh, makes it even wider, uh, you know, widely available. And now there is, um, you know, for uh, for all customers, there is a smart EMI card, right, which you can buy, you can come to our website and, uh, you know, apply for it, someone will call you, or for our existing customers, it's on the mobile app and it's a click away. So what this does is that you don't necessarily need the card, you can go to a store and actually get it, uh, you know, once you buy something, uh, you can actually avail that facility with some little bit of, uh, you know, details and paperwork. You can actually avail this facility very easily, even at the store. So we are, uh, you know, we are present in over 40,000 stores. We are there on all e-commerce sites. So it's very convenient to avail uh, consumer durable finance today. So what this really does is in the moment of truth, when there is, I mean, some of our, uh, you know, communication also says that you're at the store and you say, oh, this is beyond my budget not really because you can you know uh, it, it, it sort of look at it over a six month period three month period and this is not long long terms of credit right it's something that the amounts and and the tenures are, are structured very differently for products of this kind and not for you know the way a hl or pl which have larger requirements and and things like that so it's 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 very nice because it improves purchasing power 
and it expands uh, uh, credit uh, for uh, many people because uh, credit cards penetration is still low in this country. So in that sense, it really does that. And especially in the pandemic, since we're at the end, uh, hopefully at the end of, uh, towards the end of that, uh, what it uh, does is a lot of people were struggling with making commitments on bulk purchases, right? So we had a lot of learnings on the fact that uh, you want to preserve, you don't know what is coming. So with that insight as well, I think if people continue to make purchases, then they did use this facility just to be a little careful on, you know, what could be, you know, that you need to save for the future. So this facility even became popular even then. So some of our research says that the pandemic accelerated uh, you know, the need for uh, EMI facility as well. So from a customer perspective, I think somebody, a lot of things, I think Vivek, a lot of, uh, it was all, already covered that the need has gone up. The awareness, the, uh, the awareness has gone up. Uh, however, the sometimes people say that is it as good, is it, it's too good to be true. So uh, I think the marketing uh, uh, conversation really needs to be about taking them, making, uh, taking the message to the consumer, making it very clear what is the product and what are the terms, the transparency uh, you know, aspect of what is the exact deal. Because customers are also, there are too much going on. Like in credit, it's, it's exploding. There are so many terms. And uh, you know, while as professionals and as the industry representatives, we are very conversant with all of that. But and credit card and debit card, I think in a way has uh, been around for uh, so many uh, you know, years. So I think the task is to create awareness, usage, and uh, you know some level of transparency in what exactly some of these things do, and so therefore uh, trust will play uh, some uh, a fairly uh, good important role in in making uh, in for the consumer in some segments uh, to make consumer decisions. Right, right. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. So moving on to uh, you know another area which I think we can touch upon with everyone, which is around you know the marketing and customer acquisition strategy, with specific uh, reference to to digital, what you know what plans are, what companies are doing. So Ashwarya, uh, starting with you uh, this time around, I think you know you guys have had deep ties with uh, e-commerce partners as well as OEMs, but also direct business. I think has you know you've, you've managed to uh, make that I think fairly significant, which is I guess the holy grail because it doesn't depend on any specific partner. So could you give us some insights on how significant uh, that is now, and what is the marketing strategy that works uh, for you when it you know when it comes to building the direct uh, business? So you're right, uh, Nitin. I think the way we look at marketing is like it's pretty much, I mean, in a strange way, it's a lot like FMCG marketing because while you have to get your uh, uh, brand out to, you know, the consumers, you also have to ensure availability in shops, uh, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of that dichotomy. So yes, you're right. Uh, I think uh, while it's important to have, uh, um, you know, um, uh, a really deep merchant presence. Otherwise you don't get like, you know, what, what's the point of sort of getting the brand out there. It's important to also build some love and the recognition of uh, zest in consumers mind space, because of course at, at checkout at the moment of truth, you, know, you want them to consider you. Um, so that's really how we've sort of looked at it. And the way we look at marketing is we look at it in, in three fronts. We look at the pure play brand marketing as one aspect of things. We look at how that translates into direct digital marketing, which is performance. And, you know, the really hardworking thing, which is based on, you know, getting us our impressions and our reach and therefore our, um, you know, funnels and share and CAC, et cetera. So that's, that's the second way we look at it. And the third is, uh, you know, the category way, um, you know, of sort of ensuring that at the moment of truth, whether it is at checkout or whether it's at that inventory space, we are sort of present. Uh, so that's how we sort of have divided up the entire piece. Now, the thing is that uh, brand marketing is something that helps everything, right? It does an irrespective of whether it's an acquisition, which is through digital, or it is an acquisition through a merchant or a category. Brand serves the cause of just jumping us to, you know, higher top of mind, uh, uh, mind space in some way or form. Uh, and that's sort of what we've started off starting last year, you know, towards the end of last year. Um, what we've seen is, and when we did the campaign and, um, you know, um, we've, we saw that uh, while, you know, there was a lot of consideration for Zest and that played out in performance as well. 
what happened was even after all the festive and the sale and all of that period which is of course you know how how big you know uh, consumption is in october november and december we still had that brand recall and recognition when we measured our organic uh, traffic or we measured even our brand uh, track metrics etc so i think that's what the brand does for 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 you it lifts you up into a level of recognition that uh, sort of helps and that is a long burn right it's not short burn we we still have a lot of distance to go as we keep building it Uh, brick by brick uh, on performance what we do is we do the usual we sort of acquire whom we think are high intent consumers not necessarily merchant led or people who are going to buy today or tomorrow or now but we know that they are in the market for consumption we know that they are in the market for something so we target them uh, and we've seen good successes there we've actually because of two things one is that we are picking intent based consumers and secondly of course we know how advanced Now uh, you know, like Facebook and Google are in terms of just recommending right audiences to you, bases what we already know. So that has helped us a lot, sort of build our, our funnel uh, processes. Having said that, the third part, which is category marketing, is also very critical, and we've started that as well. Uh, um, you know, because that's pure play intent, right? If somebody's coming to Amazon, you know they're going to shop. They're not coming there to browse. Of course, some people do browse, but you know that they're coming to shop, right? The only thing is that ad tech in these platforms aren't as advanced as possibly you know your Google and facebook so the advantage of intent gets offset in some way by the algos that these folks provide so but in some level that also gives us a good uh, sort of uh, uh, good results so i mean the truth is always somewhere in between brand for overall recognition performance for you know hard working intent based audiences to get through the funnel and consider us and uh, category for you know ensuring that our really really high intent folks are sort of seeing us as checkout visibility and cart abandon etc and sort of jumping back to us so that's how we sort of have thought of uh, digital acquisition right right uh, arvind could you please uh, shed some light on your uh, marketing strategy as well because i think you are predominantly or only uh, digital uh, and also uh, you know if you could touch upon <clears throat> i think elizabeth made a point that uh, in this category it's a lot about communication and trust so especially for you being a new service uh, right how how do you how do you build that uh, via your marketing activities i think i think uh, for us the leading strategy would be to build, to build an aspirational brand right um, you know because we are going after a premium segment within the consumers of emi service we want to build uni as as a premium brand right which is also also why we roped in a mainstream celebrity uh, just launched our brand campaign um, targeted specifically at this uh, consumer right and we don't want to stand for affordability as much as we want to stand for enhancing the user's life right um, and you know build build a world around it through partnerships and storytelling right so that's that's the first pillar um the second uh, the second part of course is you know of course a lot of our acquisition today is through digital channels we go deep into understanding consumer segments channels etc do a lot of experimentation to to arrive at a winning uh, recipe right uh, the third piece is is contextual awareness building that contextual awareness right being present in e-commerce platforms right through either through offers or just advertising on these channels which basically builds an association between the occasion for which we are used and uh, the brand right um and that's largely how how we are going about acquisition today we have activities offline and online uh, at purchase uh, uh, centers whether it's shopping malls or e-commerce platforms right which basically builds that contextual awareness in terms of building trust and transparency right in fact this is one of the things we realized very early right and and being a new entrant is also sort of you know there are pros and cons to it one of the pros is that you already know what's working what's not for the industry and one of the things we realized that people uh, are afraid of of hidden charges right people don't know when when they use a emi service or another or a credit card or any other um, you know credit product uh, there's always this fear that you might be get charged for something that you're not aware of or you know uh, getting charged interest on something that you did not sort of anticipate right uh, so we took away that problem by by creating a very transparent billing schedule right and this was one of the most important sort of aspects of our product today right um, our charges are flat we don't charge interest on interest um we don't in fact even charge interest from the date of transaction every month if you want to pay a minimum due and revolve you actually pay a flat fee right and that that basically takes away the friction the fear that the consumer had about using a service like this right 
Um, and of course, you know, uh, we also claim uh, 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 that there are no hidden charges. If, if anybody does find a hidden charge beyond what we shared in the billing schedule with them, we actually give the money back, right? And so far, nobody has claimed that. Uh, I think I think we are building uh, you know trust and transparency through a transparent billing schedule, and of course the 24/7 WhatsApp support makes it uh, accessible for them, right? If there is a doubt, if there is a question around any of those charges, they can reach out to us, right? So by making it more relatable, bringing the brand closer, bringing the the customer service closer to the consumer, right? We are able to address the the trust and transparency issue, and and and. Uh, I, I agree with Elizabeth, right? Uh, building trust is very important and that happens through building transparency. Right. Um, that note, I think the uni ads are brilliant, Arvind. I just love the Wiki Kaushal, you know, roaming around in space and, you know, trying to play the piano. It's really well done. Thank you. Thank you, Aishwarya. We just, we wanted to drive the message of pay in three parts, three yes. hearts. And uh, we took a bit of a risk with our creative device, and I think it, it worked out uh, brilliantly in retrospect. Yes, extremely well. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you don't need to point out which celebrity <laughs> you did the video. I think it's one campaign that's reached a lot of people. Um, Vivek, uh, your marketing strategy, I think, so far has been uh, fairly offline, but I think you also have plans for digital. So, you know, please, please talk us through what it has been and what, what it will be. Uh, and also maybe touch upon, you know, how aggressive uh, uh, home credit might be in digital because, uh, you know, the acquisition strategies, a lot of startups employ it involve making a loss on the customer acquisition, making it good over the next couple of years. You know, is, is that the sort of uh, aggression that you would go, uh, you know, with as well when it comes to, to digital? Um, so you rightly said, yes, our so far right? Uh, as I said, right, for us, business, I will divide it to consumer deliverables and the personal loan, right? Consumer deliverables, yes, it's uh, largely driven through my offline partnerships, right? So we are today present in more than 50,000 merchants, right? And it takes a lot of time and effort to actually be present on that large universe, right? It takes years of, you know, work to get yourself present out there, right? So obviously, are we going to get rid of the offline presence? No, we are going to build further on it. So you might see that from 50,000, you might go to 100,000 this year, right? So that's the plan. So offline, are we going to leave the offline? No, we are not going to leave the offline. But does it mean that uh, are we going to not look at the digital channel? No, that's also not true. Because at the end of the day, today, this is how the industry is behaving, right? See, if you look at the home credit, our genesis, right? And the way we do the business, we actually try to serve the customers who are tra traditionally not served by the traditional NPFCs and the traditional banks as well, right? So these are the customers today. Well, there are many new players who have come up and have started talking that we are making credit available to them. But this is where we started. This is how we actually, you know, did business. Uh, we always had more than 50% customers acquiring that we are acquiring were new, new to credit, right? They had no civil history, they had no credit history at all, right? And our processes have always been very simple, right? We never asked for income document. We said, okay, just give your ID proof and address proof. We will underwrite. We have our own, you know, proprietary. Uh, algorithm to underwrite a customer, we do that, we underwrite, we get the credit, right? And we have been doing good so far in that, right? Second part to it, digital, yes, we are also have a digital first approach, right? And when you say digital first approach, what we are doing is in the consumer deliverables, while we continue to be the offline person, and we we'll make the journey, right, for the customer, it's a hybrid journey. Customers want to come at the pass and do the offline journey with the merchant, merchant will still do the offline journey, but without any paper. Right, customer, we have a merchant app. We have an app for the merchant. Merchant actually logs into the app, does the entire journey straight away without any paper document to be signed by the customer. Right. Or customers do not want to go to the POS on the first go, wants to avail the consumer deliverables approval done, and then want to go and pick up the product. We also have that option. Customers can come to our app, customers can apply for our EMI card, get the loan approved, choose the merchant where he wants to go and you know pick the product. He chooses the nearby merchants, he goes there, he picks the product, he, he goes out. Right. So for a consumer, I have the digital journey, I have the physical journey, I have the hybrid model, everything possible. Right. So whichever way customers are comfortable, not the way I am comfortable to serve. Now coming to the uh, you know personal loan segment. In the personal loan segment, we are always very you know heavy on daily sales, where we used to call customers and offer the product. Now that is a shift that we are bringing in. Today we offer, as we said I initially, I said I, we we offer more than 50% of our personal loans end to end digitally. 
it means no physical interaction whatsoever not even calling up for call center for any clarification i'm saying that level of digitally right so we offer more than 50 percent and mind you we, when we say our loan we are not the small ticket 5000 10000 per personal loan player so for us it's a big overall loan amount is quite large right so we are still among in consumer durables we are not the number one but it's still among the top nbfcs in india right similarly in the personal loan we are not the number one but after the large bank where the average ticket size is three and a half lakh four lakhs if i remove the traditional banks we are once again in the top right so even in that we do digitally in to end now when we do that are we going to burn the money uh, to really do business at loss to get some high valuation uh, answer would be no because see we are not behind valuation right we are behind doing a business where we give credit to the customers but at the same time do a business which is profitable as well for us as well where we have number of employees working for us shareholders making money out of out of the business at the same time like what elizabeth said our business model was always not today even 10 years back was based on trust and transparency for the simple reason being the segment that we operate in those segments do not understand anything they don't understand interest rate they don't understand irr they don't understand apr for them all they understand i have taken a certain amount how much of amount that i'm going to pay you back so if you look at our entire marketing campaign we spent equal amount of you know uh, or equal focus on financial literacy then uh, and the, the amount they, that you spend on the product marketing so we are you know very responsible as a you know we have find you can say kind of responsible end up where we spend equal focus on liter, you know making customer literate about what this financial jargons are all about and what does it mean to you by availing a loan and what does it mean to you by paying it back on time to get the next loan better and similar focus we also spend on digital marketing right so we have the brand right. campaign right we do digital marketing but at the same time we do a lot of financial literacy at the same time we also do all the entire offline you know uh, zing bang as well right right thanks so uh, elizabeth uh, quickly you know could, could you please give us some insight into your tgn uh, customer acquisition strategy as well uh, how it might change when your plans for digital become more aggressive and beyond yours what do you think is the right mix for for this for growing this this category so i think that the the requirement for credit uh, is there across age groups the behavior may be different the usage may be different they are uh, they are across age groups gen z millennial and uh, you know beyond that right the traditionalists as we may want to call them the the requirement is across metros and mini metros so there's a geographical uh, you know uh, deepening in terms of uh, the credit requirement the usage we see difference the traditionalists use it for larger purchases right um, but uh, i think the willingness in the younger segment gen z and millennial is they are willing to use credit uh, for uh, you live only once right their philosophy is yolo so uh, they have uh, a different uh, a different approach uh, to how they want to live their life what kind of purchase decisions they make and uh, we see them being far more open to credit so in that sense target audience wise i think that we are we are straddling a larger um, you know a, a very large audience where there is a requirement for credit the other aspect here is of course that uh, you know people who are building their credit score who are new to credit some of these emi cards can be very useful because uh, you have a pre approved limit and you can swipe that uh, like a credit or debit card in any store and it automatically converts into emi right you don't have to purchase it and convert it so it's an emi card it's a smart emi card and uh, the other aspect of the angle is that uh, you know the uh, credit is available on a lot of Uh, categories so some there is a lack of awareness and as an industry i think it's important to tell everybody on what all i think vivek spoke about health uh, appliances are known there are many many areas in which you can use some of these products and uh, it's available um, at at point of uh, purchase so uh, it's across categories across cities across age groups the, uh, the usage and behavior may be slightly different the way they approach it but um, uh, that's that's uh, really uh, what we see uh, 
in terms of how you can get it you can get it at the store okay and at a point at the moment of truth you can get it there or you can like i said you can come on to our website and apply for it and uh, you know be be done and uh, the other is on for our existing customers it's available on a click on our mobile app so it's very easy to get you have a pre approved limit and you can swipe the card to that uh, to that uh, extent and we our uh, it, you know our objective while it's trust and transparency communication, and I, I think Arvind rightly spoke about hidden charges and some of the consumer, under, and, and uh, Vivek spoke about IRR. I think these are terms which are, you know, for customers, they are very, very simple thinking. Can I afford to pay this back? How much is me? What is the catch? So these are some of those uh, things. If you clarify, then uh, they, they, there are no friction in the purchase, uh, you know, in the in the buying system, in the consumer buying system. So if you clarify all of this, and we go with Sapkuch EMI per. So most of my communication, you know, the communication we put out is on Sapkuch EMI per, which is just to expand the customer's mind, saying that, you know, don't worry about what you can really afford today. If it's something that you really like, then, uh, you know, you can you you need to check if that's available on EMI. It depends on the product, on the brand, on what it is really, because the deals keep the you know the offers and everything keeps changing. So we encourage customers to just get that awareness that you sab kuch EMI per aaj mil sakta hai. So that's really the uh, communication objective at our end, and we have a good mix of online and offline, and uh, that's where we are. All right. Thanks. So I think we are running short of time. So I think one last question and maybe quick half a minute uh, per panelist on, you know, any predictions for the BNPL space for the next year or two. And uh, Arvind, let's uh, start with you. I think there's enough headroom in the market, but also a lot of players. So do you think where, where is the space going? Is there going to be consolidation? Is there room for everyone? Uh, what are yeah. You yeah, today it's 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 I think it's about three and a half four billion dollars, and there are about uh, ten to twelve million uh, users. Um, the the prediction is that it it, it will grow to about forty five fifty billion dollars by twenty twenty six, right? Uh, and almost touch about hundred million uh, users, right? Uh, there is definitely room for for different shades of BNPL uh, to grow. Uh, and it's not a winner take all a market is what we believe uh, because there are different consumer segments with different needs and different innovative products will appeal to different uh, consumers, right? And, and I think it's, it's, a, uh, it's just getting started. Um, there's a lot of headroom. Uh, as we all know, it's an underpaid, India is an underpaid category, uh, country for, uh, for credit cards, uh, so to say, right? And BNPL is sort of pushing the envelope uh, on that. And uh, I think it's, it's an exciting journey that we are all sort of part of, it's just getting started. Thanks. Um, Ashwarya, quick take from you. I think, uh, uh, like I said, Zest's been around for a while. Is uh, this sudden onslaught of new new players, has it been a problem or has it opened up the market and where do you see things going from here? I think that if you have anything, multiple, have 400 million households, I think there's enough, you know, room, the giant room to play for everybody. So for sure, I think this has just helped. Uh, the category will explode like how it has, you know, in the past, every other category that has seen this kind of influx, the category has just exploded. Uh, and I think this, everyone's trying to pretty much solve the same problem. And I think the way at, it, at which everyone is coming is just slightly different. For some, it's cards. For some, it's a very good digital product. For some, it's trying to do a bunch of uh, all of it put together. For some, it's just a smart card split into an EMI. So I think there's enough headroom. And I think different people have different ways of consuming credit. And they'll just sort of settle into what they think suits their uh, purpose and floats their boat and sort of consume it. Uh, but having said that, I think trust is super critical. Uh, the reason why, you know, the, the Indian financial system is so strong is because there's a bunch of trustworthy brands out there and a bunch of trustworthy banks out there whose fundamentals are very strong. I think that's the one to watch out for in the next five or six years as to, you know, how the uh, principles of the strong financial ethos in the country sort of applies to this new age kind of, you know, online banking uh, trendy space that sort of come out, right? I think that's what that's the one to wait and watch. But no doubt, uh, you know, I think this is like the Robin Hood of the grand equalizer, right? Uh, you know, give to the, you know, give, uh, the poor and the people who cannot afford if it comes, if their standard of living moves up because of this, I, that's what I see happening, you know, in the next uh, three to four years. And like you said, a three, four billion industry today, but I think it's more poised to look more like a 40, I think in the next 
two years, two to three years. So I think that's really what's exciting about the space. Enough uh, players, to, in, enough enough room for all of the players to sort of have their share of the pie, I think. Yeah. Um, we'll make quick closing comments on uh, trends that you see going forward. I actually totally agree with everyone because this is the market that we are going to see. This is just started. This is not the explosion, okay? To be honest, this is not the explosion. This is just the start point. See, I am a card person, payment payment industry guy for entire life. So when I started selling credit card, I used to say credit card. Actually, when I look at it, it's a BNPL, right? That's what I have sold many years back. But today, BNPL has just taken a new shape and form. But at the same time, it's appealing to a customer who otherwise will not get a credit card. And at the same time, also willing to the customer who already have a credit card as well, right? So it's a kind of, it's not ex just starting, which will explode and will not explode to one segment, but explode to both the segments of the customer. Customers have a credit card, customers don't have a credit card as well. It's going to grow big, that's for sure. Is there something more to watch out for? I would say yes. In the next couple of years, we might see regulators coming a little differently on this segment because this segment is not opening up. So we will see little regulations coming in into digital lending and the while white paper is there, but you will see regulations coming on the BNPL as well. And you will also see regulation on BNPL reporting. But will that hamper the growth? No, will that not? But that will only help the end customer. Right. Um, and uh, Elizabeth, if you could please uh, close the session out for us with your, with your closing thoughts on trends. I would uh, say from the customer's perspective, I think there's going to be a lot of credit, but uh, everything to be uh, looked at with uh, real caution and uh, with some level of responsibility, because that is important for the, uh, you know, the entire financial system and the, uh, it, it sort of is important for the backbone that everybody approaches credit with a fair amount of responsibility, while there will be a lot of options uh, around. And I think for all market players, like everybody said on this thing, is to be, uh, you know, as transparent, as, as very clear to explain to the customer exactly what we're doing, because you do have a very, very eager customer on the other end, but they must all be guided correctly. And I think we have a lot of responsibility as marketeers to take the message, uh, uh, build the right kind of awareness, uh, build, uh, communicate clearly so that the customer, uh, as we build a new and uh, very new category, which will, uh, like everybody said on this panel, will explode. I think there should be responsibility on, on both sides. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bhavna, handing back to you. I think we overshot short our time by a bit. No, 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 absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Nitin. Uh, what a fabulous discussion uh, that was. And thank you for curating it uh, so well. I'd like to humbly thank all our panelists for your time. We'll definitely stay connected with you. Thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. It was nice thank connecting you. with you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.